we were all broken toys, right? We say, we say we're, we're part of the island of misfit toys. Because everybody's broken. Even the best of us have some brokenness. But it says in the scripture, and particularly in Isaiah 53, in verse 5, it says that by his stripes we are healed. The challenge to that scripture is it's really kind of misunderstood in many cases. That many times it's taught that God's going to heal all of your diseases, going to heal all of your aches and pains. That's not what it means. What it means is that he's restored us from a life that is doomed to, to damnation because of sin. Now, within that process, our life would, he may, he may heal us of some diseases. He may heal us of some infirmities. But that's not the focus of the scripture. The focus is that eternal healing. And so that's what we need to look for. And the reason we need to teach it correctly is these many people are discouraged by their bodies falling apart. And we all get there. You young people don't have such a smug look on your face. Someday you're going to look like me. Isn't that sad? I know you're smirking me. It's true, though. When, when we're young, we, we think we're invincible. And we think, you know, uh, you know I'm, I'm, I'm going to beat the odds. We're all going to die, right? And we all go a little differently. Everybody's kind of unique. Whatever, whatever days the Lord has numbered for us, right? It's... It's important because we can, if we're expecting something that God's not going to deliver, then you're going to be discouraged. You're going to be disappointed. But God's looking to partner with us that we are co-workers together and that we can we pursue him even when we're broken. Some people don't want to do that. I don't like it. God's let me down. How many of you said God let me down? In relationships, God let me down. God didn't let us down. People let us down. The devil lets us down. Of course, the devil isn't there to help us anyway. So I don't know why you're looking for good things from him because he's not going to deliver those. Well, that's, his, that's what he does. We need to wrap our hearts and our minds around the God of Israel, how he works so that, that we can face the trials. We were talking uh, in our discipleship boot camp last night. We were actually spent a lot of time talking about trial and testing. We go through trial and testing. You can be the best believer. You're still going to go through trial and testing. And the devil is going to try and use that trial and testing against you. Sometimes that's where conflict comes from. The devil gets into a lot of things. And he doesn't have to do much to set us off sometimes. When you get offended, the devil's probably there helping you along, right? We need to have the mind of Messiah. In 1 Peter chapter 2, I think it's verse 4. No. Well, somewhere in there, maybe 24, if it's not four. It talks about Messiah Yeshua bearing our sins, which is similar to what it's talking about in Isaiah 53. That God will has, has put himself in the place of us, that he bears our sins, he bore our sins. But it also says in First Peter that in the midst of trial and testing, we all should be expecting trial and testing because God's looking to see what are you going to do. You can't say, Lord, why did you pick me? Because he picks everybody, particularly those that are faithful. He picks them to test their faith. God knows what your faith level is, but you don't. And when we, when we complain and when we gripe and when we groan, you're not passing the test. Because it, and that will take you to, it will erode whatever faith you have. We have to, the Lord will be there to get us through the testing. That's what 1 Corinthians chapter 10 talks about, that God loves us so much that he will give us a way out from underneath those temptations and that testing. 
But do you trust him to do that? You can't overcome testing until you're being tested. Right? It's easy to have faith when nothing's going wrong. Where's your faith when things aren't going right? In your view. And God's saying, I got you exactly where I want you. What are you going to do? What are you going to say? What's your attitude? What's your body language? This is important because as uh, we were talking last night, and I've said many times, it's not what you say, it's what you do. You are judged based on the life you live, not the words that you speak. That's not going to get you into the, into the eternal heaven. It's our actions. It's our deeds that are measured, that are weighed. And the sooner that each of us can learn that, the better off we'll be because we can be at more peace. But we also have to abide in what, what, what his rules and regulations are. Commandments are important. If you're in sin, you need to break that sin up. Because if you're, in, if you're in intentional sin, there's no salvation in intentional sin. If you're constantly in a sin, then that may very well lead you to damnation. God's grace is not cheap. Although it's taught that way, it's not. If you are intentionally sinning, you are going to be judged for that at the judgment. So we all, all of us, because we all have something in our closets. Maybe you're more fortunate and you only have one closet and you stuff everything in that one closet. But when you do that, it's all going to explode, right? It's going to... It gets all over you. You know, we may be able to hide from the many, but you can't hide from God any of the time. He's keeping track. God does give mulligans but only for a sincere heart and those are, that are willing to lay down their sin. But you can't keep going back to the sin because that, that just condemns you. You can't make excuses. You can't go, well, God's grace is sufficient. Well, God's grace is sufficient, but if you're in rebellion, his grace doesn't cover you. Why do you think Israel was in the desert and was in the exile and still is in exile? All the times that, they're out, that they've been out, why is that? Because God removes his grace upon those that sin against his name and sin against him. We are no different. And there are consequences for that, including death. I'm not talking just physical death, but spiritual death. We, the, the only opportunity we have to repent and change is right now, the breath that you draw, because you may not wake up tomorrow. You may not get home. I could fall off here and break my neck. We won't tempt the Lord our God. I'm not going to show you how that works. But we need to give a, a, an urgency to how we live our lives and the decisions that we're making. One, so that the Lord's grace can flow and that we can be healed of our diseases. That we can, and not the, just the physical diseases, the emotional diseases. The, d- the disease of sin. Sin is a disease, isn't it? It's a disease. It's a, like cancer. The more you do, the more you do. Right? So, there needs to be, you need to allow healing in your life. You need to turn your life around. You can't just keep doing what you were doing. You can't, you can do that, but you're going to, to no avail. God's not going to go, ah, it's okay. He's not going to do that. His word tells us he's not going to do that. Today is the day to find that healing, to draw, to draw closer to the Messiah by how you live your life, how you think about your life, laying down the things of this world that tend to overwhelm us, to consume us in our choices. We're all full of excuses. Why I can't get the services? Why I can't do this? Why I can't support that? There are excuses, and they're lame excuses, no pun intended. They're lame excuses. We make excuses for why we can't be following and, and, and desiring to lift the Lord up. Many excuses. Some excuses 
makes or have a common sense to them, but they're still just excuses. What are your priorities in your life? Is God your priority? Is your own self selfish interest your priority? Because God's watching. I don't know what you're doing most of the time, but God knows. God knows what you're thinking. He knows what you're contemplating. And hopefully you have some relationship with the Holy Spirit that will remind you of what your responsibilities are to life, to the Lord first, then to yourself, to family, that you make wise decisions. The farther you go, get away from the Lord, the closer you are to damnation. Think about it that way. Let's uh, get ready to play, if you don't mind. And... Uh, I just, I, I, I pray one for healing, a healing for the maybe this, the whatever physical infirmities you have, but also the infirmities of your mind and of our hearts that we could be transformed. We allow the Lord to change us and not to run away from him, but to run close to him. Amen? Amen.